Um, hello, uh, I'm Camille Getz and I'm here in Jim Gilmore's studio just a little west of Alamosa and Jim has been working on this land and this place and with his art for a great long time. He's going to be telling us a little bit about the uh, process of, of the art and also how he how he has related to this land that he has lived on so long. Perhaps he'll give us a background of uh, who first uh, settled here and some of the early family history, and then we'll progress from there. Jim Gilmore, Thanks. thank you for taking Thanks. time to talk with us. Uh, to start out where the land, when we first came here, my dad bought it, actually the, the ranch the year before I was born. And so I've lived here all my life, and uh, he bought it uh, from some people that had a nursery here. And then he leveled all the land, and uh, put all the ditches in, you know, did everything, built most of the buildings by hand, mostly didn't have power tools back then, so all hand tools. And so, um, really we've lived, or I've lived on the ranch here uh, all my life, and I ran the ranch, my dad passed away when I was fairly young, so I ran the ranch for a while, and then uh, just felt like I had to get into the art business and try it, you one way or the other. <laughs> and so, um, started in the art business about 25 years ago oh. and uh, we leased the ranch out but we still live here and uh, enjoy it you know every day that we get up and so uh, it's been a, it's been it's worked real good for me to be on the art because the wildlife and the, the uh, I, I did some western art a lot earlier and still starting to do a little bit more of that so that's been influenced you know, by growing up on the land and, and coming from a ranching background and a wildlife, with wildlife all around. So that's really influenced me. And to protect the ranch, to keep the conservation uh, easement, you know, on the ranch to where it will never be developed, that, that's real important to, to both my brother and I. And when was it um, you decided to uh, acquire a conservation easement? Well, two years ago, oh. I guess, and then we went through the process. It took about a year to get everything done and had to go through it, and then it was finalized probably about a year ago. I would imagine. Oh, it's wonderful! It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So, can we go back to when you were a little boy, and um, probably in the summer you were outside practically all the time? About from yeah, uh, early morning till late at night, <laughs> and. and uh, I always loved the ranch, always loved animals. Calving time was my favorite time of the year when I could just be around the cattle and I didn't care for the farming too much, but the animals I really loved and the cowboy type of stuff. So uh, I, I can remember when I was real young, uh, my dad stopped by uh, an old saddle maker here, Bill Chapel, mm -hmm. and uh, he was also doing art and I knew from right then that I really wanted to get into that. So I, I started a leather shop and uh, in the winters when I was working on the ranch I would work in the leather shop all winter and make belts and horse gear and everything like that. So and then uh, finally decided to go into the art full time. I guess that was kind all of a transition. Kind of led, yeah. led from one to the other. That's right. It's just That's a natural. Right. And I always felt because a lot of times I would uh, when I should have been out working on a ranch I was <laughs> my dad bought me an old narrow gauge boxcar and said, Here, here's a shop. I had bugged him for years for a shop and my mom was probably real thankful to get all this stuff out of my bedroom. <laughs> and so I fixed it up and uh, you know, I would sneak away when I was probably should be working on the ranch and sneak in the boxcar and work on leather or oh. starting to do sculptures or paintings or something oh. like that. So, and then I just started sculpting a little bit more and then it got out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a, a wonderful, I know it's not a display, but it's where you keep your models. Um, it's it's so actually a lot of junk I've acquired over the years. Oh. <laughs> it's not but all it, your work? But it's, it's what I love, and I wanted to be a museum taxidermist when I was young, oh. too. And so I, uh, Ernie Wilkinson, that here in Monte Vista, was a, a great friend and an oh. influence on me, so, uh, you know. Got into that. Oh, so you did that too, your yeah. taxidermy too. <laughs> yeah, it's not, not uh, that much, but for my own. Yeah. Know, it's just always an interest for me. Oh, 
Well, um, this represents probably 25 or more years of, of your right. work right here. Right. And you, um, looks like you probably always save your the models and... A lot of them I do. Yeah. You know, a lot of these little wax models are, are uh, pieces that I've done over the years, uh, hoping to it would turn out to be a big sculpture or just little models I've done out in the field, you yeah. know, and so it's kind of, I call it studio debris. <laughs> it just sets around and you don't know how much... Uh, what to do with them, or you know, oh, well, they're wonderful. Day, and maybe someday yes. you'll some of them will become large, yeah, and exactly. quite a few. Have, and a lot right? of these, yeah, <laughs> are little models that I work out the composition and, and the form of the piece in before I start a little larger clay model. Uh -huh. So, uh, and then I have another, an old, our old cabin barn that I remodeled into a big studio that I do monuments in. Oh, uh, I do great big pieces. So, oh, my goodness. Uh, and then what? And that, well, let's why don't we start more back at the beginning? These wax, these little dark wax models. I wonder if we could zero in on. on um, oh, yeah, this okay. Is, this is a, a piece I just completed. This oh. is this is how I start out when I want to see what kind of a composition I might have an idea, and I'll sit down and work with this these small wax models because you can see how the piece is going to develop easier in this in a little small piece and. And as you can see in, in most clay pieces, I'll need an armature going all through it to, uh, to support the piece. This, the little wax ones you really don't, so you can bend them around and shape them however you want. And once I get this and I'm satisfied with the little small uh, wax pieces, then I'll go ahead and build an armature and then start a bigger clay piece. This was about, a uh, piece was about 18 inches long and maybe okay. you know, 24 to 28 inches long after I did the clay. So okay. that's that's basically uh, I will do that uh, and then the wax goes from the clay and then uh, from the clay and then once it's all finished and completed then I take it to a foundry and we make a mold of it okay. and then it goes through the whole lost wax uh, oh. process all of right. casting and then it's cast in bronze and uh, whether they're small pieces or I did a double life-size bison a few years ago, uh, and they're both cast the same way, oh. except the bison is just cast in small pieces and welded together. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, as of right now, where are, where could someone go to see your work? Uh, you know, I'm in quite a few, probably ten galleries kind of throughout the West, in places like Vail and um, Santa Fe and Jackson, Wyoming. And all the, you know, the hot spots. Like yeah. That. And so, uh, and then I go to a couple of shows uh, during the year, uh, one in Tulsa and the Big Loveland Sculpture Show, and that's about all the shows I do anymore. Oh. I used to do a lot more, but oh. I'm getting lazy. <laughs> Not lazy, so like this. <laughs> so, uh, and how about right here in Alamosa? If someone wanted to just drive you know, around I, and I see have, your uh, work. I have uh, my pieces out in my studio. I don't show anywhere in Alamosa, okay. but uh, I have plenty of pieces always out at the studio that are cast and ready to go, so Great. anybody is welcome to stop by and give me a call first and stop yeah. by and take a look. Yeah. Well, um, I don't, I'm not sure about this, but am I wrong about the grizzly? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, tell, tell us about uh, that. <laughs> that was, uh, that that that. was a piece that uh, my brother was president of the college and, and uh, they wanted, when they changed their name to the Grizzlies, you know, they wanted a mascot. And education was always so important to my parents, and I thought I always wanted to do that. And so uh, Jeff Geyser um, contacted me, the, the athletic director then, about possibly doing the Grizzlies. So I basically uh, did that for cost form because I just wanted, you know, to do something for the college here. So. Well, it is stunning. Project. It's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> Just saw it a few minutes ago. Good.